Welcome to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. I'm Craig Mish along with Davis Maddock. It is fantasy football season here on our show. So today we're going to take a closer look at the Indianapolis Colts. That's coming up in about 10 minutes from now. Of course, we've got Fantasy Reality, the Sports Grid 60, and all of our top headlines here on the show from around training camp. And Davis, of course, this is the final week of the NFL preseason. We have one more week to go. Everyone gets those games in this weekend and probably nobody really important on the field. And then it is the march toward the regular season. We're getting closer and closer. We are getting closer and closer. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, whatever surface you have close. I, I was just kind of pondering this yesterday. No real major catastrophic injury in the preseason mm -hmm. for fantasy football. You know, Tim Patrick did tear his ACL. We've had a couple scares. You know, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster has not been practicing with a knee injury. We heard uh, that Khalil Herbert, backup Bears running back, suffered an injury. But, you know, in terms of the uh, top 50 pick, you know, being out for the year with a preseason injury, we don't have any of that yet, which is uh, remarkable. You know, I think that's, uh, that's, that's definitely a positive development at this point in the season for sure so let's get to our headlines here on the show as we begin on this tuesday aaron Rodgers says romeo dobbs is going to be expected to play quite a bit this is a big development for the packers we'll see if this is just lip service or not but there's a good shot that if you draft him late you maybe get something out of him this season on the flip side early drafters of Kenyon drake you had to kind of see the writing on the wall with this one the raiders plan to release the once upon a time starting running back for the dolphins and in fantasy football jordan montgomery throws a complete game shutout in the win over the chicago cubs and the brewers are placing Aaron Ashby on the 15-day injured list. Of course, full slate of baseball games as well tonight. Uh, but, you know, Raiders, you know, making some noise here. They traded Nick Mullins yesterday. It looks like Kenyon Drake is now out of Las Vegas. I know this probably, like, catches some people by surprise. But, Davis, the really only reason why would be because you know his name. <laughs> you know, other than that, he really hasn't been all that viable even since leaving Miami. He had about a four-game stretch, I believe, a couple of years ago where he looked really good. And he'll catch on with someone else, probably kick around the league for a few years. But uh, what does this mean for, like, the Raiders' backfield at this point beyond Josh Jacobs? Uh, I think it means that Amir Abdullah is probably going to be their third down back. And it would also seem to suggest that whatever the team is seen out of fourth-round pick, Zamir White out of Georgia, has been good enough to them that would suggest that if they were to, uh, you know, if Josh Jacobs was to get hurt, play poorly and need to be benched, you know, because Josh Jacobs is heading into the final year of his rookie contract. The team did not pick up the fifth round option that you get uh, because Josh Jacobs once upon a time was a first round pick in the NFL draft. So it, mm -hmm. it would seem that they are fine having a backup running back room of Brandon Bolden, who is going to play special teams, Amir Abdullah, who is going to play special teams and Zamir White kind of just has the handcuff there for Josh Jacobs. So not not a huge shakeup in fantasy football, but probably some minor ramifications. Yeah, a late, late round pick for sure. And, and then going back to the, I know we got to get into the Colts a lot here on the show, but going back to the Packers for a minute, uh, you know, lip service here. I mean, these are some of the things that we have to be really careful for going into the season. That's for sure. I mean, I, I don't fully believe anything that's said, and I don't think this changes my opinion at all. I think, uh, you know, whoever performs the best for Aaron Rodgers is going to get the most targets. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine they're, they're you know, uh, 11 personnel to start the season when they head out week one. It's going to be Randall Cobb, Alan Lazard, and Sammy Watkins. Robert Tunyon's going to be in there at tight end as he's recovering from an ACL injury. And then it's going to be Aaron Jones. I mean, maybe A.J. Dillon gets the first carry of the season for the Packers. But Randall Cobb is, I believe, 33. Sammy Watkins is on his third team in three years, was one of the worst performing wide receivers in the NFL last season. And uh, to be honest, I also think Alan Lazard is uh, being super overdrafted in fantasy football right now. So there's lots of opportunity there for Jubes. I mean, and, and Christian Watson, for that matter, the 34th overall pick in the NFL draft. He's been injured in training camp. Mm. But uh, assuming injury, poor performance from any of those three veterans, I think we are going to see these young guys get in there sooner rather than later in Green Bay. Yep. One other note to bring to you, the Brooklyn Nets just sent out a, a tweet, which, uh, you know, sort of, you know, kind of tells us, honestly, Davis, what we've been thinking here for the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, obviously, Brooklyn did not find a trade partner for Kevin Durant in the way that they wanted to. And uh, apparently, uh, he had a meeting with Sean Marks and Steve Nash. It looks like Durant will be back in Brooklyn, at least for the time being. 
Yeah, and that's kind of the way it, it trended, right? I mean, you felt like every single day that Kevin Durant remained a member of the Brooklyn Nets and became more likely the next day he would be a member of the Brooklyn Nets. And to me, what it sounds like is the offers just have not been good enough. You know, I think the Nets would be fine trading him if they got the Jalen Brown and five first-round picks type haul or whatever, but uh, especially after DeAndre Ayton signed that offer sheet, which meant he could not be traded from the Phoenix Suns, and that's where – Kevin Durant wants to go. It basically just seemed like it was the deal was uh, was not out there. But um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's like are Ben Simmons and Kevin Durant actually going to suit up for the Nets this year? I guess uh, time time will tell. Yeah, it, it definitely feels exactly what you just said. That Nets probably would have done something fair, but no fair deal came in. They probably sat down with Durant and said, "Hey, like you got to play nice for a bit until we can get something that we really want." And I think that's the right move for the. And that's two. All right, coming up next, the Indianapolis Colts with yet another new starting quarterback going into 2022. It is incredible. Uh, you know, it's honestly incredible how good the Colts have been, considering they've now gone through, I think, five and five years, something along those lines. Will Matt Ryan make the difference for the Colts this season? Will they not collapse down the stretch like last year? And I will get into that next day on the grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game practice. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like, so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a In half. game, Four-win. live, oh, prime yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. early line i don't like this pit team at all it's again it's a seven and a half with a lot of juice right now in the fan duel sports book towards the under flip to the eight maybe they're eight and a half and let's talk a little turkey here with pit with pit versus miami for the coastal is i do think pit found themselves the easier schedule and perhaps the big difference is one of them goes to clemson the other one doesn't play him at all only on sports grid Fantasy Sports Today. Nico Collins, who got some nice playing time toward the end of the year, but really not a lot of interest. His ADP is 217. I think Nico Collins is sort of interesting in the same way that like Devin Funchess was interesting, right? Because he's a super athletic guy. He's huge, 6'4", 215. I mean, he got on the field as a rookie. Not not that many guys who are drafted where Nico Collins is drafted. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Do you believe he has the stones to fire both of them? His dad would have. I don't. I, I think Boone. I think Boone is safe, no matter what happens. You know, maybe if they don't win the East, but that's almost impossible. So I think he's safe. Uh, Cashman's contract, I believe, is uh, up uh, after this year. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I would think he'd be in more, uh, a lot more trouble than, than Boone would. The Sports Grid Network. Great, 
Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. I'm Craig Mish along with Davis Maddock. Our fantasy football focus today is on the Indianapolis Colts. Each day here on the show, we're reviewing one team in the NFL from a fantasy perspective. Today, we focus on Indianapolis. Davis, we're going to get to the average draft position of all the Colts and where they're being drafted right now in the NFFC. Uh, Colts were one of the bigger stories, honestly, in the NFL last season. They had the best running back in fantasy football and had the biggest collapse we've seen in years. So you combine those two things. And uh, they actually were a pretty intriguing team down the stretch. A really amazing, amazing collapse. I know they don't call it amazing, but it cost uh, a lot a lot of issues, I think, for people at the end of last year. And, and it cost them their starting quarterback. I mean, basically, that Week 17 game that they lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars is why they felt the need to make another move, a quarterback, and end up acquiring Matt Ryan. I mean, I, I suppose the Carson Wentz roller coaster was starting to sour a little bit, but you do feel if they did win that game against the Jaguars, they probably don't feel as much pressure to make a move. And uh, I mean, look, you know, what can you expect when Carson Wentz is your quarterback? But that probably the most interesting thing about the Colts is that their roster is really good. They have a great offensive line. The defense is solid. Michael Pittman looks like a huge win uh, in terms of a guy that they were able to get in the second round. They have a lot of interesting wide receivers on the roster. You know, Ashton Doolin, uh, to Michael Harris, like just lots of guys who are interesting in general. And uh, they still, no one thinks they can win the Super Bowl. Well, I don't know. Maybe people do. I don't think they can win uh, a Super Bowl. But I do, I do kind of like the move they made from Wentz to Ryan because Ryan just feels like the same thing as Phillip Rivers, right? Just, you know, kind of a steady caretaker type guy. Yeah. And, and one of the better run organizations in the NFL. It just doesn't seem they, they, they lose guys and just guys come in and step up and. They don't win championships, Davis, but they win 9, 10, 11 games, you know, and that's, you know, honestly a recipe for success in the NFL. That's where you want to be. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the ADP for the NFFC for a lot of the players being drafted. Matt Ryan no longer a starter on your 12-team league anymore, but certainly being drafted as a backup or a, a solid super flex, uh, flex player. Jonathan Taylor will talk about a ton. He's the first pick overall. Naheem Hines also will get a fair share of opportunities, as we saw last year. Michael Pittman is a third-round pick. Wide receiver one, eh, probably not, but for some people he may end up being if you draft two running backs at the beginning. Alec Pierce will investigate him and talk about Moali Cox, who's really an afterthought in terms of fantasy. So now let's get to Matt Ryan, who did Davis throw for a fair number of yards last season, but the touchdowns were down significantly. He did not have Julio Jones, of course, in Atlanta anymore. Uh, he did not have Calvin Ridley, really, for you know for all of last year, too. Uh, and, and basically, Kyle Pitts was learning his way. I, I guess the question that I would ask, because you brought up the name, is that I believe that Wentz, uh, you know, I'm on the same board as you. Like, I, I don't like Wentz at all. But is Ryan an upgrade over where Rivers was two years ago? Because if that is the case, at least we could say that Ryan could be a bye week fill-in, which is what Rivers was, was in, with Indianapolis two, two seasons ago. You know, I, I got to be honest, I don't really think that Matt Ryan is. And it's definitely hard to tell because the environment that he was in in Atlanta the last two years was just, I mean, to be, it was toxic, right? I mean, it was like Julio Jones was in and out of the lineup, then no Julio last year, then Calvin Ridley was in, then Calvin Ridley was out. They gave him Kyle Pitts, but Kyle Pitts is, you know, a 21-year-old tight end. And then you have Olamide Zacchaeus and Brian, like just, you know, just, a total mishmash of guys, and they probably had the worst running back talent in the NFL, too, the last couple of years. You know, they bring Todd Gurley in. They bring Mike Davis in. It's so bad they have to convert Cordero Patterson from a wide receiver to a running back. Like, this is just all a mess. And the offensive line was horrible the entire time as well. Uh, and and even in that environment, you know, uh, in 2020, he had a 7.3 YPA, 7.1 YPA last season. So I, I would guess that Matt Ryan will, well, not even guess. I will say definitively, I think he is going to perform better than Carson Wentz did last season. But Phillip Rivers, that last year in Indianapolis, you know, he was definitely, he was, he was no slouch, right? I mean, he threw 543 passes, 24 touchdowns, and, uh, you know, was really, you know, only 11 interceptions. And that was kind of always Rivers' thing was he was always a little bit too willing to throw, um, an interception. I'll, I'll say it's close. I, I will say they are probably very likely to get a sort of a replica season uh, from Matt Ryan for what Philip Rivers did for them. Yeah, I think it's fair. I think he's a top 24 quarterback borderline. 
but right there, like basically for your backup quarterback, maybe your bye week fill in. I, I certainly think I could find five quarterbacks that I I would not want over uh, over Matt Ryan. But that's about it. Um, okay, so Jonathan Taylor Davis, this is like the easiest conversation to have, but naturally, fancy football novices and people who are not like us, they just want to know: should I take Taylor number one, one one overall? And there it is. There's your question. Yeah, no, no chance for me. Uh, I don't even know for sure if I would take him too. Uh, I would, I would maybe take uh, one of these amazing wide receivers instead of him too. Because my, my thing with Jonathan Taylor is, you know, how do you have legendary fantasy seasons? So the one thing is, you either are going to score a bunch of touchdowns, which Jonathan Taylor did last year, or you have to catch a lot of passes. And Jonathan Taylor does not catch a lot of passes. Uh, and now part of that could be that. You know, Naheem Hines is on the roster. Carson Wentz doesn't uh, does not check the ball down a ton. But also, that's not really Jonathan Taylor's skill set. You know, last season he had only 51 targets, right? I mean, that is we're we're talking about like Christian McCaffrey. Not only is he going to have more, like, he, he might have 100 receptions. You know, forget mm-hmm. forget targets. He might have 100 receptions. So really, at the end of the day, it comes down to how do you want to play fantasy football? I want to be basically as aggressive as possible with almost every selection. I, uh, you know, most fantasy football games are not close and there's nothing better than having a super team, right? You know, you don't want to go into your playoff semifinal and be like, I don't know, this one's close. This one's a nail batter. No, you just want to have the best possible team that can be done. And uh, Jonathan Taylor last season, you know, obviously he was phenomenal, 1800 rushing Mm -hmm. yards, 18 touchdowns, but 40 reception, 360 yards, two receiving touchdowns. I mean, that is that's just not going to get it done because if he just gets a little bit unlucky with rushing touchdowns this season, you're talking about like a massive regression in terms of fantasy points per game. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Really, really hard because a lot of people are taking him 1-1 overall, but naturally the pass catchers are going to end up winning you the leagues. It's almost the same conversation we had last year with Derrick Henry. All right, now let's move on to his potential backup running back. And the Colts have a few guys who usually play, but Naheem Hines is the pass catcher on the team, although his numbers, let's be honest, were pretty pedestrian last year. 275 or 76 rushing yards, two touchdowns. He's basically going as his handcuff. I mean, that's really it, Davis. And, And I guess the question is, should he go a little bit higher, maybe with less players to compete for playing time there behind Taylor? So I actually don't really think Naheem Hines is going to end up being the handcuff. You know, I mean, I I think he is going to play, especially when you look at how inexperienced in general the Colts wide receiver group is. So they're, well, I mean, I guess T.Y. Hilton could always decide, you know, the day before the season, he's like, you know what, I am going to come back and resign. But outside of of Michael Pittman, it's just a lot of depth guys, right? Alec Pierce is a rookie. Paris Campbell is injured every single year. Then they have the, you know, Ashton Doolin type guys. They have a lot of project type guys. So Hines should be out there and involved. But Hines has never had more than 89 rushing attempts in a season. He has uh, more career targets than he does career rushes. It's just kind of the guy he is. I actually think Philip Lindsay is is probably the uh, the handcuff for Jonathan Taylor to get injured. But I do like Hines where he goes, just because you know sometimes you just need a guy who's going to grind out eight points for you. Sometimes. Yeah, didn't even realize Philip Lindsay was on the Colts. I mean, where was Philip Lindsay last year? Miami and where else? Somewhere else, right? Well, he got cut mid-season, right, and then showed up in my – I, I can't remember. He was on multiple teams last year. Texas, Houston. there we go. <laughs> Houston, Texas. All right, so that's our look at the running backs and quarterbacks of the Indianapolis Colts. Coming up next, it's time for us to take a look at the wide receivers and tight end. In particular, Michael Pittman is one of the higher Colts being drafted. Does his ADP mean he's worth taking in the late second or third round of fantasy football? We'll tell you next. They'll go away. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. Play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the, the morning Russell after. Wilson. 
we saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to coast. Gee, that's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game penguins. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like, so everybody is out for the Warriors. In-game, live, all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In-game, live, win. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In-game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. like this pit team at all it's again it's a seven and a half with a lot of juice right now in the fan duel sports book towards the under flip to the eight maybe they're eight and a half and let's talk a little turkey here with pit with pit versus miami for the coastal is i do think pit found themselves the easier schedule and perhaps the big difference is one of them goes to clemson the other one doesn't play them at all only on sports grid Fantasy Sports Today. Nico Collins, who got some nice playing time toward the end of the year, but really not a lot of interest. His ADP is 217. I think Nico Collins is sort of interesting in the same way that like Devin Funches was interesting, right? Because he's this super athletic guy. He's huge, 6'4", 215. I mean, he got on the field as a rookie. Not, not that many guys who are drafted where Nico Collins is drafted. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Do you believe he has the stones to fire both of them? His dad would have. I don't. Uh, I think Boone. I think Boone is safe, no matter what happens. You know, maybe if they don't win the East, but that's almost impossible. So I think he's safe. Uh, Cashman's contract, I believe, is uh, up uh, after this year. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I would think he'd be in more, uh, a lot more trouble than, than Boone would. The Sports Grid Network. We continue our look at the Indianapolis Colts from a fantasy perspective with fantasy football drafts coming up this weekend for a lot of you. We took a look at Matt Ryan and the running backs on the Colts. We're going to pivot over to the wide receivers and, of course, tight end. Maybe give you a name or two of maybe some players that aren't being drafted in the top 200 that you could consider. Let's take a look, though, at the average draft position, according to the NFFC, of all of the players on the Indianapolis Colts. We have Jonathan Taylor, who's usually the first or second overall pick. Michael Pittman is in the third round, followed by Naheem Hines at 142. Matt Ryan is at 170. And then Alec Pierce, who will discuss here is at 214. All right, so uh, Davis, despite the poor quarterback play, especially down the stretch of the Colts, Michael Pittman did put together somewhat of an impressive season. He ended up being wide receiver 13 in fantasy, and and those were with some really dismal games in the midst of a 17-game season. It almost seemed like he was either all in or all out. He was hard to sort of trust, but when you did play him and he did well, boy, he helped you a ton in DFS. I, I guess what owners are hoping for based on his positional rank going into this year is that he just is a little bit more consistent and honestly where he's being drafted giving you about what 15 to 20 percent more numbers about 1200 yards eight to ten touchdowns and then that would fit where he's being drafted. I mean I, I can't really say that Michael Pittman is not a good selection where he goes if Matt Ryan is going to be a sizable upgrade on Carson Wentz. You know Pittman last year, he did only have the two 100-yard games, did only score six touchdowns, but, you know, basically just was out there all the time, uh, you know, more games with a 90% or greater snap share than 80% or lower. That's one of the things that we love about his situation, which is that none of the other guys on this depth chart 
are going to force him out of there. We also saw, you know, a nice year over year progression. He only played in 13 games as a rookie, 500 yards and one touchdown, a thousand yards, six touchdowns last year. Uh, so, you know, if you just kind of scale him up, then, you know, if he, I mean, if he gets to 1200 yards and 10 touchdowns, he is probably one of the best bets on the board because you are, you're getting him in a really good range in the draft where lots of the guys you're selecting, you don't feel great about, you know, it's kind of after that tier of premium second round running backs is gone. Then it's a group of like Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, DJ Moore, Terry McLaurin, and then Pittman. And Pittman probably has the most stable role out of all those guys. But again, he does got to have serious ceiling because, you know, if you look at that archetype of guy he is, I mean, he's he's big, right? He is 6'2", 225 pounds. Like, why would he not be used as a red zone weapon? And as we were just talking about with Jonathan Taylor, you know, Jonathan Taylor scores 20 touchdowns last year. A big part of their offense was just giving him the ball on the three-yard line. But, you know, if four of those touchdowns go the other way, that's going to be a huge boon to Pittman. So I do, I do really like him where he goes. All right, fair enough. And, and he is the clear-cut one. Now, as far as the clear-cut two, again, as Davis mentioned, T.Y. Hilton through the years was that guy that we always were hoping for. Uh, came through for a number of years until the end. Paris Campbell was another name that did come up in the past. And now the name that at least has, has gotten fantasy owners at least a little bit excited is Alec Pierce, who seems to be a guy, as he played for the University of Cincinnati, that's basically going to just run over the middle, uh, turn around and catch the ball. But what does that mean for fantasy? Davis, that means five catches. It means 50 yards. It means a PPR potential starter. He's not being drafted as that. There are still some questions as to what the Colts may end up doing. But naturally, if Ryan duplicates the numbers from last season, which is close to 4,000 yards, there's going to be 800, 900 yards to go around somewhere among several players. Do you think Pierce is one of those? I mean, Pierce, by all reports from Indianapolis Colts camp, has basically been one of the standouts. And they do they do kind of need a standout, right? So, you know, with no T.Y. Hilton, the, the guys who have been on the roster, Paris Campbell, Kiki Cutie, Desmond Patton, Ashton Doolin, Michael Harris, Mike Strachan. Like, they're, these, I, I think most of those guys are interesting. You know, I think if Paris Campbell was able to stay healthy for 17 games, he would be pretty interesting. I think if they actually decided to play Ashton Doolin on the outside, I mean, he is a, a super athletic guy, like, and and did well in a limited sample last season. Uh, to Michael Harris, kind of in that uh, Isaiah McKenzie, Dexter McCluster role in that offense, you know, not never going to play enough snaps, I think, to be fantasy relevant. But Pierce, I think, should because he's been having a great camp. He was one of the guys who was the biggest risers at the combine, 6'3", 210 pounds, ran a 4'4", you know, just like a super athletic guy. The production was not really there at Cincinnati. And if you look at who his quarterback was, it actually kind of makes sense. His quarterback was Desmond Ritter. The big knock on Desmond Ritter coming out of college was he was just not comfortable throwing the deep ball, you know, just didn't really like to take shots, kind of just was a caretaker of that Cincinnati Bearcats offense. who They were really good in Ritter's final season there. I, I find myself buying on Pierce. You know, one thing I like to do is just draft a bunch of rookie wide receivers in general because you, you, you never know if you're going to be drafting the next Jalen Rager sure. or the next Justin Jefferson, right? But, I mean, you were, you're just getting such a discount on the range of outcomes. I mean, Jamar Chase was a six-round pick last season, right? Like you were just like mm -hmm. it, targeting rookie and second year wide receivers is just really good strategy in general. And again, you know, it I'll, I kind of so much of this just falls on like, is Matt Ryan going to be 2017 Matt Ryan or 2022 Matt Ryan? If he's closer to 2017 Matt Ryan, I mean, Pierce is going to be like, I mean, he might have 800 yards and five touchdowns. Like he might be a guy you really loved to pick up. So I, I do like uh, taking out Pierce. Yeah, and, and look, let's be honest, Zach Pascal had a pretty prominent role with the Colts the last couple of years. No one really wanted him to, but he was sort of always there, catching passes, catching touchdowns. Those those numbers are going somewhere this year. Maybe it is to Pierce, maybe somewhere else. We will investigate that as well. Now, at tight end, uh, Mo Ali cox Davis is one of those, I feel like over the course of 17 games, I'm going to be doing a show with you or I'm going to watch a show somewhere else and someone's going to tell him this is the week at DFS to play Mo Alley Cox. But beyond that, uh, you know, Jack Doyle was really, you know, pretty solid for them for a number of years. Now he's gone. Uh, 
and I mean, is, is, is he a draftable player, Mo Alley Cox? I mean, 300 yards and four touchdowns is not going to be representative of what you want your tight end to be, but it does, it just sort of feels like he's going to have one or two games this year when you have to identify them. I definitely think you're right. I mean, I definitely think there will be one or two games, you know, he scores two touchdowns or has like a 60 yard gain or something like that because they, the Colts, you know, for, for, I, we were just going back to this. I mean, they can't figure out quarterback, but they do draft lots of guys on offense who I like, you know, versatile guys, guys who are really, you know, we were just talking about Alec Pierce and Ashton Doolin, like these guys who are just super athletic, Mo Ali Cox, same deal. Uh, I think the thorn in his side though, is going to be the tight end that they drafted in the third round this year to kind of take up some of those Jack Doyle snaps, who is Jelani Woods, who was basically, uh, you know, there's a, there's a metric out there that NFL teams use called relative athletic score. So it basically adjusts all of your measurables for how large you are. And Jelani mm-hmm. Woods is 6'8", 255 mm-hmm. pounds. So we're talking like massive, massive guy, ran a four six forty. You know, it's just ba- like ba- just like alien size, right? Which is what some of these tight ends are. You know, the, these these crazy athletic and I mean, we've seen loads of them over the year. Lots of them. You know, Dorn Dickerson, Ladarius Green. These guys don't pan out. But then when they do pan out, they turn into some of the absolute best players in the league. And again, according to all reports out of Colts camp, he has been pretty good. Kylan Granson was a rookie last season found his way onto the field. I believe he scored two touchdowns last season. He is going to be in there playing a little bit. And the the Colts do a lot of two tight end stuff. Is Mo Ali Cox is probably draftable, you know, specifically in like tight end premium formats, you know, the FFPC main event. It's 1.5 PPR for tight ends. Like he's probably worth a roster spot there, but I'm not going too hard on him. One, because I think Indianapolis is just going to play pretty slow on offense. You know, they did that with Wentz. They did that with Rivers. Mm-hmm. They're not a high volume offense and again i don't i don't want to be too invested in the matt ryan thing because i just think the the range of outcomes is so wide all right so beyond cox and beyond pierce uh you've done a million of these so is there anyone popping on some of your teams that you're taking a shot on is Doolin a guy that can run down the field catch a 50 yard touchdown four times this year like is there anyone else yeah, I mean, Ashton Doolin, I think, is a really good 18th round pick. The, so he's entering into his fourth year in the NFL. He went to a really small school, uh, Malone College. I've literally never even heard. I, I, I might be a D3 school even, but he was one of those guys who did get a combine invite, showed up, was unreal, you know, is, is still super young, you know, only 25 despite heading into his fourth year in the NFL got on the field last season, 22 targets, 173 yards, two touchdowns. I, I wonder if actually he is going to be playing on the outside to begin the season over Alec Pierce. And, you know, he's just kind of one of those bets that, you know, you know, miles, miles Austin, you know, some of these guys who have been, it takes them a lot. Victor Cruz, you know, takes them a long time because they don't really know how to play the position once they get, to the NFL, but they kind of have all of the the tools. The tools just need to be put together. Not that I'm saying Ashton Doolin is the next Miles Austin or whatever, but I I just there's something about him that's pretty intriguing to me, and I do I do like taking him in the last round. All right, so there you have it. That's our look at the Indianapolis Colts this season. And make sure that if you missed any part of our discussion here on the Colts, you can catch it archived over on our YouTube channel and also on sportsgrid.com. And our social media team is constantly posting our comments about some of these players as well. We're doing one team each day, all the way through the preseason up until the NFL regular season, which is two weeks from Thursday. Wow, it's coming fast and furious, that's for sure. All right, we gotta take a quick time out here on the show. When we come back, it's time for some fantasy or reality. So stay on the grid for that. Of course, we have the Sports Grid 60 as well. And then Kevin and Donnie have the early line from noon to two Eastern. I'm back with you here at 2 o'clock for another edition of Newswire. So stay on the grid. We'll be back in just a few minutes with Fantasy Reality right after this. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. 
play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like, the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In-game, live, I all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In-game, oh, live, oh, prime yeah, time. The PGA champion. In-game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get begins. the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Are you concerned at all for what this means for Tom at the age of 45, entering his 23rd year? Definitely not concerned. Uh, I think it's something to contemplate, but I, I think it's something where when you've been doing this so long, you know, I mean, you're a veteran now of television. If Ben Stevens takes a week off, Ben Stevens is going to show up and do his job. Now, magnify that times 20 plus, right? And that's Tom Brady. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. I mean, honestly, uh, between Davis and, and Diggs, I mean, they are lethal. I mean, between uh, Josh Allen having that choice, and he goes to Davis a lot. And, and he, you know, he, he's got to get Stephon his, his uh, you know, targets. But between the two of them, I mean, honestly, it's almost like good luck trying to stop that offense. They are very dangerous. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute. Remember we talked about how important it is for Major League Baseball to capture the fan experience and make sure they love the baseball game while are at the park. Well, here's another example of loving a game when you're at the park. But how about golf? An 11,000 square foot simulation experience at American Family Field in Milwaukee by a golf company to get people interested in taking practice swings to get a golf simulator used like every other golf simulator, uh, pace, uh, uh, height, uh, distance, all of those issues, but you can do it while the Brewers are playing. And you can even do it when the Brewers, Brewers on the road. This will be open and available for other kinds of events as well. If this goes well, watch for all other baseball stadiums in the country to take notice in some context. Clearly, fan engagement, a top priority. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today. We got fantasy reality coming up. We probably should have mentioned, as we previewed the Indianapolis Colts, Davis, real quick, uh, that the Colts are actually, for people who are drafting defense and special teams and kickers, which we really haven't talked a ton about, honestly, in our team previews, that the Colts are actually one of those teams that people do take uh, as their defense. Number one, uh, Davis, they do have a good defense. And number two, they play Indianapolis, they play Jacksonville. So I, I think that's part of the thinking there. I, I don't know who your favorite defense has been in leagues where you have to do it. I know a lot of these leagues, you don't have to do it anymore. But we probably shouldn't just ignore it throughout fantasy football draft season because I know I'm playing in a league coming up that does draft a defense. Yep, I will, uh, I'll I'll give you my defense that I'm just taking for the first two weeks so I can set it and forget it and not have to think about it. I'm, I'm taking them in every league. The San Francisco 49ers open up the year playing at home to the Chicago Bears, probably the worst offensive mm. line in the NFL. Justin Fields going to take a million sacks. I, you know, my my feelings on Justin Fields are well known, but he's going to get eaten up in that game. And then they play the Geno Smith or Drew Locke, Seattle Seahawks. So absolute mm. set it and forget it defense the first two weeks of the season. Uh, you're, you're probably going to have to move on uh, as they play the Denver Broncos in week three. But I, I would imagine – after two weeks, the 49ers are going to be the number one defense in fantasy football, probably like eight sacks in those two games. So uh, there you go. 49ers. I, I even, I did, I did a main event draft last night, 20 rounds, and we took them in the 15th round, I think, just because we're like, let's just get them, set it, and just, and just move Great. on and we can fill out the rest of our roster there. Yeah. Love, love the thinking there for sure. Are they at home both games, by the way? That second game is at a home against Seattle or at Seattle? Just curious. 
they're all, they're they're at Seattle in the second game, home to the Bears in the first game. But and which you're right, I mean, generally you do want to play the defense at home. But I'm willing to make an exception for Geno Smith and Drew Locke. Yeah, I think that's a wise idea. There you go, 49ers defense to start your season. Let's get started with some fantasy or reality. All right, let's get started with a little gaming to start fantasy or reality. I've been known to dabble in a little MLB The Show over the last couple of years, a little RBI baseball as well, so I think this can apply maybe to me. It definitely does apply to Davis as uh, PGA 2K23 was announced, and some screenshots came out, which were pretty interesting, because naturally, as you would expect, Tiger Woods did make the game, but guess who else made it? Michael Jordan, interestingly enough. Davis, I know that you will dabble in FIFA, some baseball, some basketball as well. I guess let's throw it over to golf, fantasy or reality. You will buy PGA 2K23 because you can play as Tiger Woods and also as Michael Jordan. So I would need to know a little bit more of the specifics. I have played a fair amount of golf video games in my life. You know, the old Tiger Woods one. Uh, there was one year where they called it Rory McIlroy golf after the... Uh, it was one of the tight. I mean, there's been so many Tiger incidents. I even forget which one it was. Uh, that Rory game, by the way, if you have it sitting in there, it's you know it's the last uh, EA Sports golf video game. So it's a little bit of a collector's item if you if you have that sitting in a closet. I probably well, I definitely am not going to buy it right when it first comes out. I will wait to read some reviews, see what courses are available, see what game modes are available. But I am I'm roughly interested in the idea of like a really immersive career mode for golf you know a creative golfer and you get to go play all the and maybe you grind the corn fairy tour or whatever like it's relatively interesting to me but uh i'm gonna say as of right now august 23rd i'm saying fantasy i probably won't yeah i'm gonna say probably fantasy for me too although i love golf my son loves playing golf and it's gonna have to be him to be the one to hit the buy button on that or at least want to and then it comes down to the commitment for playing 18 holes uh, and I'm sure you're going to be playing online and playing versus your friends and all that stuff. I mean, look, this does not sound terrible here. There's a possibility of it. But, you know, again, Little League Baseball season is coming up. I'm just not sure when we're going to have the time to do all this. So I, I'm going to say fantasy, but it definitely has my interest just to see. I, I think like like you, Davis, I think I'm waiting for a review and then I'll determine what to do. Maybe you'll be the guinea pig on this for me on that one. It's possible for sure. All right. Well, the hottest hitter in baseball over the last month has been Albert Pujols. I mean, it's really hard to explain at this point. Six home runs, I believe, in his last seven games. He's been essentially the top hitter in terms of OPS since the All-Star break. And we know it's a hot streak. This is not going to continue forever. And it wouldn't continue with any baseball player forever. If his name was Pujols or if his name was Trout, it just doesn't matter. You just, he cannot stay this hot. It's impossible. So as it stands right now, he's at least put himself into the conversation where when we asked this question two months ago, we said, no way, this is a big fantasy. He's not going to get to 700 home runs. We definitely were both wrong in that assessment, but he still, Davis, is seven home runs away, about 40 games to play, fantasy or reality, Albert Pools will do it before the end of the season. Well, I mean, I guess that's not part of this actual question. I know that you speculated he'd come back next year, but let's just make the assumption that he has done this year. Fantasy reality, Albert Pujols will reach 700 home runs. Yeah, I'm saying I'm saying reality, but fantasy this year. I, I think basically what's going to happen is Albert Pujols is going to sign probably with the Cardinals again next year, uh, you know, for a really low amount of money, you know, one-year veteran minimums deal or whatever, and they're going to bat him like eighth and, and DH him. And when he hits that 700th home run, whatever it happens, you know, he'll probably play like two days a week. And uh, he's going to hit that 700th home run. And then he's going to walk into the dugout, take the jersey off. And uh, that's going to be it. He will be done playing uh, professional baseball or at least pro major league baseball. Because I, cause 40 games, seven more home runs. I mean, that is that is a tall order for most players in general. Uh, and yes, this hot streak has been amazing to watch. Like it's unreal to watch how, I mean, you know, no, no one actually in America, I don't think, actually knows how old Albert Pujols is. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's unreal. It's unreal to see. It's been very cool. Uh, I hope he gets it this season. I think it would maybe be like more poetic for him to do it this season than have to come back and do the farewell tour again next year. But I'll say reality. 
he there's just I I would put it at like a one percent chance he retires being seven home runs away from seven hundred. Yeah, last week he said he is retiring at the end of the season, no matter what. So, listen, players have been known to no change way. before. So no way. He said he's doing it. He said he's doing it. But listen, your take is fair because, again, players are known to change their minds for sure. Albert Pools, if I'm not mistaken, a couple of years ago when he was with the Angels, thought that, that was his final destination. Then he went to the Dodgers. Then he came back to the Cardinals, too. Just saying. So we'll see. Uh, I'm going to say reality. But I, I think this is going to be, Davis, in my opinion, excruciating because he cannot keep this up. And it's going to be really close. Like, I, I don't think – I think we may be coming down to, like, the last game or, like, the last week of the season. And the Cardinals – Do they, do they play the Pirates? How many more times they, do they play the Pirates? The they Pirates. Should... They're at the Pirates. So they should yes. just work it out that that the Pirates just bring in some guy who just like is tossing BP to him, is throwing like underhanded pitches to him. Because I think just like if he really says he wants to retire, like come on, let's just get, like uh, like Favre laid down so so Strahan can get the record. Let's yeah. let's do that for yeah. Albert. Yeah, yeah. A lot a lot of people thought Wainwright did that too with Jeter. Uh, you know, giving him his I That's think it was, right. was it three thousand. I, I don't. A lot of people yep. thought that Wainwright denied it, but who really knows? Uh, yeah, so it's funny that, that we brought this up because, you know, my son is like, we have to go to this. We have to go see history here. And I have to, you know, I'm like trying to explain to him, like, listen, like, I think it'd be awesome to see too. But the downside is pretty immense. We could go, maybe he doesn't play, maybe he doesn't do it. And then we're just like going to St. Louis. Like, you got to think this through a little bit. I've, I've been I would, I would advise against it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, if you want to go to the playoffs for a game, we know that that's going to happen, and maybe we'll go to a dome. Like, but I mean, gosh, to go to St. Louis for like just for games, and then he doesn't play, and we're sitting there like it'll be fun. But I got reality. I think he does it. I think he does it before the end, and and hopefully for the Cardinals, they're going to fight with Milwaukee clearly here. Uh, hopefully they clinch the division with a couple games to go, so they could like lead them off or something, you know, like get him this thing before it ends. But I'll say, I'll say reality. And I'll say this year, I don't think he's coming back, but I'll probably be wrong. Okay. Now in Venice, it was really interesting because there were a couple of, of guys just basically wakeboarding or surfboarding. I don't even know what you would call it uh, specifically, but this, this video went viral of these people. If you've never been to Italy and seen this, they they basically decided to take to the water and and they were just riding on the back of a boat and it was you know really upset a lot of officials for doing this and naturally the reason why is because there's like a huge wake like people live in the streets if you've never seen uh this in italy uh but they've offered basically they, they can't find the people davis which is crazy like it's been a week and they have not been able to they've been able to identify who they think they are but they just can't find the people fantasy or reality davis one of the rewards here is is getting a free dinner fantasy reality you would identify someone for a free dinner so basically you're outing them they get in trouble in this case it's an arrest i guess it would just depend on the the strength of what you would be doing to the people but uh, what, what do you think here totally depends on the crime totally depends on who wants to identify them what they want to identify them for you know if the government wants to identify some peaceful protesters to lock them out of their bank accounts not doing it for a free dinner right so it, it, it's totally the context now in this context i'm all like i love classic art i love all you know all, i think venice is so cool um you know and 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 would i just i think that's like not i mean disrespectful is whatever but it's just not good for that specific environment and i don't like people that treat uh you know venerable historical institutions like playgrounds right so in this scenario reality if i could i would totally identify them for a free dinner but it's very context dependent it depends on who is asking me to identify them what the what you know what the perpetrator did or whatever but i'll say in this scenario i would i would do it yeah i would say for the most part it's probably a fantasy for me unless this is this needs to happen from like a good Samaritan point of view where something is really done wrong to an individual. I mean, you wouldn't even need to give me a dinner to be able to do that. Uh, look, what these guys did in particular here is totally bogus and obviously goes against everything that they have uh, as far as, you know, the reason why this is so set up in such a nice way. The wake, I believe, is like a mile an hour or two miles an hour or something along those lines. But for these dudes just to get in trouble... And, and my name to come out of it or potentially to come back to me over something so silly, this is fantasy. I, I don't care for it. But to do the right thing, 
you don't need to hand over anything for me to identify somebody. Of course, I would always do that. But I think Davis, in this case, they were just trying to have fun. It was not the right thing to do. But far be it from me to be the one that has a chance of getting pointed the finger at is calling someone out for it. And I'll, I'll just pass. I'll let somebody else be that person in this case. Yeah. In general, like my attitude in life would not be to cooperate with the authorities, whatever the authorities were and whatever they wanted. I mean, that, that's just sort of that's just sort of ingrained in me. Uh, you know, I don't I don't want to be, uh, you know, I don't want to be the person snitching out my uh, my fellow working man. So I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah, I think so. All right, that's fantasy or reality for the day. Coming up next, we got the Sports Grid 60, so stay with us, folks, as we continue on. Also, don't forget, you can follow us on social media on Twitter, at SportsGrid and at SportsGrid TV for the latest news, notes, information, picks against the spread. And, of course, we just made a huge announcement here on SportsGrid about our big partnership with BetMGM. So you can follow us there at SportsGrid and at SportsGrid TV on Twitter. Really easy to do and costs you absolutely nothing. SportsGrid 60 is coming up next. Then we turn it over to Kevin and Donnie with the early line. And then I'll be back with you at 2 o'clock Eastern for the uh, Newswire show. And then I'm on with Scott Farrell, as a matter of fact, later today too. So be right back. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune in to Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The morning after. Why are you buying in on Dylan's stock for 2022? Aaron Jones has been remarkably consistent for the Packers, and I kind of see him playing almost a Alvin Kamara role in the slot, setting about wide. And I think they're going to try and save him from taking this, you know, ground and pound, and they're going to leave that role to AJ Dillon to have this kind of more of a balanced approach because they need a little more consistency in their passing game. I think it helps that the Packers' offensive line is right now ranked fifth. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Football is always so much fun because you see new players literally every single year, and the anticipation is stupendous once it gets underway. And we're really close to a 12 30 game overseas this weekend between Northwestern and Nebraska. And yeah, you're going to settle into Connecticut playing Utah State with a 27 and a half point line. Everybody gets in the way. Big 10 Pac 12. We cannot wait for this. Only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. The running back that appears to make the biggest jump maybe in the last two months, uh, maybe in all of fantasy, honestly, Davis, is Damian Pierce, who played for the University of Florida. And the beef that went on at Florida, Davis, is that people wanted to see him get the ball more. He really was never a primary running back at Florida. He's sort of a throwback guy in the sense that you give him the ball, he's never going to lose yards. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. This is yet, I'm told, the fourth, at least the fourth different offense that Mayfield has to learn as a professional in his five years. And from the very start, Pharrell, they kind of knew it. I'm told after two weeks, he was so dominant over Darnold. It wasn't bad, but the fact of the matter is his timing was good. I'm told a couple of the throws are a little bit high. They feel that the time will be better as these guys work together. The Sports Grid Network. Right, right. 
as we welcome you back here to Fantasy Sports Today. Just a reminder, 2 o'clock Eastern, up right back here on Newswire. We're getting ready for the upcoming college football season. I hope to see you then. Before we go, here's Davis Maddock. He's got an opinion for today's Sports Grid 60. So, uh, Craig, as you well know, we are getting into the part of the season where your buddies start texting you, like, hey, who are the sleepers? Who do I pick in, in the you know the 10th, 11th round of my, my draft and stuff like that? And I, I wonder if you get this where you tell someone a name and then they're like, oh, you know, I don't like that guy, right? So it's so it's so funny that the, the people reach out and they're like, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not actually going to take that advice. But it got me thinking, like, the number one thing in fantasy football, like the last three years has just been, take a bunch of rookie wide receivers. Now, we obviously, we don't know which ones are going to exceed expectations. You know, who's going to be the next Jamar Chase? Who's going to be the next uh, Jalen Rager, right? Like, we, we just don't know. But if you go back and look at basically the biggest sleepers in fantasy football the last three seasons, it's all been A.J. Brown, Chase Claypool, Amon Ross St. Brown, D.K. Metcalf. Like, it's all about the, the rookie wide receivers. Yeah, definitely so. And I'm glad you brought that up because that actually uh, does come to mind because the number one player that I gave out to everyone last year was Debo Samuel. And I definitely have a mental list this year, Davis, for those people who did not thank me at the end of the season and, and or would not knew nothing after that and just are like, can you help me again this year? You know, and I, and I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do in that spot. But the people who did thank me, I know and I remember and I definitely will at least try to help. Uh, probably get it very wrong this year, too. Um, yeah, so I, I want to end the show today just real quick. Uh, looks like Kevin Durant is now headed to social media. A lot of NBA players seemingly are upset that this took so long for him to return to Brooklyn. So we'll have to monitor this as we go on to see if there's any more beef, because, of course, the NBA is all about drama and beef. That will do it for the show. Thanks again to LTN, our graphics department, as well as our producer, Brett Levy, and my co-host, Davis Maddox. I'm Craig Mitt. Hope you have a great day. See you back here at 2 Eastern. 